What's up, gang? Sloth Boy 2000 here. Uh, I've got kind of a special video, so special that we broke out the the crispy audio. Listen to that Chris. Oh my God, that's such crispy audio. And Alex is filming with the gimbal right now. This is a big video, much anticipated. For those of you guys that follow me on the gram and social medias, know that I have upgraded from my 16 foot low, my boat, to something much bigger and more badass. Uh, but before I begin today's video, I gotta give a huge shout out to Mercury Marine and Low for feeling very sorry for me after seeing me rip around in the 16 foot boat and hooking it up with this magnificent rig. Like I don't even know what to do with this thing, it's so sick. So to kind of set the scene, this is the boat that we used for 20 something days during the Never Stop Tour. Peric and I basically were living out of this boat. It's a great rig, and today I'm gonna go over this, this boat that is, I guess, apparently mine now. This feels surreal. I've never owned anything this nice, and I'm a little worried to own something this nice, but at the very least, we're gonna use it for the rest of 2019 and 2020 season, and show you guys all around this boat and why I like it, what I'm gonna use it for, and some things that make this unique to other boats. So, should we show them? Oh, check it out. This is insane, like absolutely nuts. So to get the boring technical stuff out of the way, this is a low stinger 19.8, meaning it's a 19 foot boat. It's all aluminum, it's a dual axle trailer. It is a behemoth compared to my last boat. Like, I feel like my boat was probably as big as just the front section. So this is, uh, this is quite the rig. On the back, this thing is powered by a Mercury 150 horsepower four stroke outboard. I'm still actually breaking this in, believe it or not. We broke it in during the tour meeting. We couldn't go as fast as we wanted to, but we may or may not have gotten just under 50 miles per hour. This thing hoots. It's a light aluminum boat with a 150 on the back. It really does some uh, some freaking zooming. And when you hammer it down, oh, it just, it just goes. That's the exterior of the boat. It's a 19 foot, got the big motor in the back, which is, I think, what, another 90 horsepower more than my previous motor? I had a 60 horse in my last boat. So we're taking big moves here, big steps up. Let's hop in the boat and talk about what's inside. We already got the boat all decaled out. I'm fully sponsored. You're not sponsored until you've got decals on your on your boat and your boat deck. So we've got nothing but Guggen Squad, Free Range, and of course, Carl, Shop Carl's the spot to get tackle. Um, anyway, this is the inside of the boat. It is huge. Mungus. It's a single console, which I like because it leaves more room for my dog and my gear. And you know, I've got Alex filming. He's got all of his camera gear. So this is nice and spacious. So this right here is the cockpit. This is where you do all the vroom vrooming. You just freaking hammer down, let it rip, get to the spot in a crisp 6.9 seconds. But this is, this is the driver's seat. Pretty simplistic design. You've got your live well switch, your bilge, your lights, your power. And when you turn the power on, you can beep the horn. <laughs> Way better than my last one. My last horn sounded pretty puny, but this is like a, a more masculine horn, a little more fierce. This boat does have a hot foot, meaning I don't have a manual throttle that I can control with my hand. It's just like a pedal in your car, only there's no brakes in this thing. It also has active trim, which is really dope. Active trim is like, I don't want to call it cruise control. It's, it's, it's like almost like an automatic trim that when you lay on the acceleration, your motor automatically trims down so you can get on plane without having to trim down and then also lay on the the gas, so that's pretty cool. That's like a new thing for Mercury, I guess. I didn't realize this boat had it until like day five on the tour, so that's really gnarly. Right here, I've got the only graph. This is a Helix 9. It didn't use it much, it's got side scan. It's nice. I like Hummingbird, I use Hummingbird graphs and it works, how about that, it freaking works. Okay, it hasn't broken on me yet, so. Can we add how freaking comfy these seats are? It's like legitimate airplane seats. I've never been in a, in a cockpit of an airplane, but I'm, I'm guessing this is probably what it'd feel like. These are very huggy seats, they're extremely comfortable, and I'm not even saying this to be biased, these are the most comfortable seats I've ever been in a boat. They make my last boat look like I've got a lawn chair uh, as my front deck or whatever. This is nice, you can fit two people here. I think the max capacity in this boat's four. Um, so you put like two people there, two people here, of course, and then the driver. So that's gnarly. You've got compartments here, like for cell phones, wallets, stuff that can get lost easily. Cup holders for your, um, your juices, your coffee, your diet, sparkling, mineral water or whatever the hell you like to drink when you're when you're cranking lips. This right here is the live well. This is where I put all my 10 pounders. Wow, it's a little stinky in there. Whew. I guess I forgot to drain it. Biggest fish I think we put in here, actually, I'm not gonna ruin the surprise, but we put a monster in here during the tour. Uh, it's a pretty large live well. Like you could fit a good amount of fish if you wanted to fish tournaments out of this boat. Obviously, you easily could. This is a, a monster well, and it's also got a divider too. But anyway, that's pretty cool. Uh, <laughs> and then over here on the left and right side, We've got more storage. If uh, if you, you take your buddy fishing and you don't want to necessarily clutter up the boat deck, you can have him put his stuff here. They're not monstrous compartments in the rear, but they work. You know, I can fit my soft plastics here. I can fit, I think, six trays total in these two. So 
That is saucy, I like that. Flipping around. So this is the boat deck. This is where all the action happens. Um, it's actually surprisingly a lot bigger than I anticipated. It's huge for a 19 foot boat. This is uh, very spacious, very spacious. We got compartments here, we got compartments here. And then right here is the, is the twiddle stick cave. This is where I keep all my rods and it can fit an absolute tiddy ton of rods, like a plethora. I think I've got roughly 14, 13 rods in there right now. So that's, I mean, that's amazing. Those are rods with reels on them too. So tons of space in the rod compartment. I like how it's in the middle too. I don't like the ones that are on the side and so on and so forth. Um, these tackle compartments on either side of the rod locker though are huge. Like watch this, I can fit in this thing. Like not even kidding. Biggest compartments I've ever seen in a 19 foot boat. All right, yep, there I go, going in. Hang on, I gotta get adjusted. I just put a hook in my knee. <laughs> I'm not even kidding. I just put a fucking hook in my knee. Ow. Oh God, I might need your help. Oh, shit. Captain, I'm bleeding. Ow. Why the hell is there a loose treble hook? Look at my knee. Dude, I like legitimately <laughs> got hooked. Okay, let's try this again. I'm trying to make a point here. Okay, there we go. Incredible. Can you believe this? Six foot one sloth can fit inside of his own boat compartment. So that's pretty dope. Okay, I'm popping out. Where are you at, Alex? Oh, yeah. So there you have it. I mean, that is humongous. Um, ow, I really messed myself up there. I thought it was all through the bar, but I was like, well, there goes the boat tour. We're done with that. But yeah, I'm just trying to make a point here. There's a lot of spaces, but I think people think that like aluminum boats, especially ones that are like 18, 19 foot, um, don't have a lot of room in them. I was also a uh, part of that naysayer group, but I'm a believer after owning this 19.8 for a few months now. Actually, it's only been a month. I think it's officially been a month now that I've owned this rig. Wow. Before we begin the rest of the tour, I gotta, I gotta be honest, like I am not the most organized individual. I think a lot of people when these do these boat tours, they feel like they've gotta clean their boat up. That's not real in my opinion. This is, this is real life. This is what my compartment probably is gonna look like for the rest of 2019. Like I'm not even gonna BS you guys. It's unorganized, but it's also organized in a sense because it's like, you know, I know everything's out. Like right now, like frogs, not even looking. Boom, frogs, got it. What else do you guys need? You guys need cross? You guys need eliminators? Boom, eliminators. Not even looking. I know where everything is in this boat without even looking. Boom. So I don't even hear a single John is disorganized content. I know. I'm aware of it. Yeah, this is just kind of like my uh, hard bait, soft plastic, everything compartment as far as lures go. Um, I don't really know what this compartment's for. It's, <laughs> it's sort of a garage sale, uh, a hodgepodge, if you will. Life vests, jackets. I do have some lures in here. Instruction manuals on how to fix things when they break. Super important. Um, yeah, I just got a bag of, like, it's just, it's a lot. This is kind of like my yard sale compartment. But we're not done yet. We have more compartments. Actually, one of my favorite compartments of this whole boat is right here. This little guy right here is actually my favorite compartment. This is kind of like the junk drawer. Um, I got a lot of junk. And when I'm like fishing, I don't like to nice and neatly put lures back where they belong. So this is a kind of an opportunity for me to kind of just cut something off, throw it in there, and then continue fishing. And when I'm done with that, I can take this out. This is like a removable tray. And then I can, you know, like put it wherever I need to, like bring it into my tackle cave and work on it with that. So I've got actually two of these. I keep my um, loose lures and that. And then the left side, I keep all of my uh, tools. I got hook cutters in here because, I mean, I'm no stranger to getting hooked in the finger as you guys saw, I just hooked myself in the knee. So that's like for safety. Got a hook sharpener, which is extremely bent. Look at that. I don't know how it got like that. A little bit of sun sauce. That's nice. Um, some garlic dye, which is nice to put in there because it's, there's like no fabric. There's nothing that like I'm worried about getting messed up. So I just put the garlic dye in there and I use a ton of uh, garlic, um, like chartreuse and red dye. So that's cool. Like that's something that I like about this boat. It's got two little junk areas, put all the loose stuff in here. Like I got some loose lures right here. Like, oh, what am I gonna do with this? I know, put it right in the junk drawer and forget about it and don't deal with it until like, a week later, so this is like the perfect John B boat. Like, I'm not gonna lie. It's very durable. We, I mean, I can't even count how many trees we hit. We hit many trees. Sorry, Lo, if you're watching this video, but yeah, we, we really put this thing to the test. We drove it hard, we beat it up, and it's still floating. Key, 
no hulls. That's, that's really huge when you don't put a hole in a boat that's a month old. So that's that for compartments. Now we gotta talk about what's at the bow, the very front of the boat. So this is the driving force, one of our fishing spots. This is an 80 pound thrust Minn Kota Ultrex. This is a really nice motor. It's got spot lock. It's uh, powerful enough to push this boat. Like you could put a 112 on this 19 foot boat, but the 80 is perfectly fine. I don't think you need to spend the extra bucks to go overkill. And like I said, this boat came fully rigged and ready. Pretty sure if you go on Lowe's website, you can customize your boat, rig it to your liking. Exactly what I did with this one. I wanted this motor and that graph. They made it happen, so a huge shout out to them. What else do we need to talk about, dude? Rods and reels. Oh yeah. Let's talk about rods and reels. You guys have been asking, or at least Alex has been saying, you guys have been asking that you're curious as to what rods and reels I've been using a lot this season because we're getting into summer, so things are changing. All right, let's pull out a few sticks. Okay. So three rods that I used a ton on the Never Stop Tour and that I will probably continue to use for the rest of summer. First one we got right here is the one I've talked about a ton. This is a favorite big sexy 7.2. It's, uh, it's like, they're kind of more premier model rod. It's right around $200. It's a great stick, it's very light. It's, in my opinion, one of the lighter rods they make. They've got that Summit, which is really light, but I like the way this one feels a little bit more. Um, and it's less expensive than the Summit. And on here I've got a uh, 7.4 to one casting reel. Did I say that right? I think I nailed it. Sick. Um, but this is like my jig rod. I fish a lot of jigs in the summertime. Let's be real, I fish jigs year round, but a lot of times in the summertime I'll throw um, like finesse jigs, big football head jigs, and I like this rod for both those types of lures. On here I'm either rocking 17 or 25 pound test. So it's a nice range. If I'm flipping heavy stuff, I'll do 25. If I'm fishing open water on some rocks, we'll use 17. That way I can get a longer cast blah, 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 so on and so forth. It's a good stick. You, you just gotta try it. Then, next, is a rod that I just recently started using a ton. This has not been like a long time rod, but I've, I've liked using it recently. It's a Phantom, my favorite. It's a 7.3 medium action rod. It's a crankbait stick. Um, I like throwing crankbaits in the summertime, like deep diving crankbaits, anything ranging from like 10 to 15. And this is a really good rod for that. I use this uh, a lot on the Never Stop Tour to throw actually like little swim baits too. This is a little um, uh, bull shad by uh, Buka and uh, uh, Ketchco. It's like a collaboration lure. Anyway, it's a really good tiny swim bait uh, rod. It's good for big jerk baits too. It's it's like a reaction rod. Anything you're, you're fishing that's moving, this is kind of the ticket. So I'm usually rocking 12 pound test with this. You know, lighter line, 12 pound, 10 pound gets that bait deeper. All that scientific stuff, you know how we do. That's a great rod. This is less expensive than the big sexy. And I think it actually looks a little bit better. I like that kind of camo that gray and black camo, very dirty. The next rod, and the last one I'm gonna talk about, is also another Phantom. This is a 711 freaking hammer. I think it's a heavy. Is it? It's just a heavy, it's just a broomstick. Like you could put a broom head on this and sweep your floor. It's, it's a really big rod, but the reason why I like this big rod is because I really like throwing swim baits, big swim baits, big glide baits in the summertime, um, bull shooters, uh, big top waters, and this rod can handle that all. So. I mean, I'm rocking nothing less than 25 pound test uh, fluorocarbon on this. Sometimes I'll throw like straight 50 braid too if I'm throwing big top waters. But it's a heavy rod, like don't get me wrong, I don't expect to buy this and have it be your feather white, featherweight stick. It's, it's not like that, it's, it's made for big applications. So I rock this with a, uh, what is this, a 7.4? I think it's a 7.4 to one or 7.1 to one, big reel. It's, it's a heavy duty setup. Oh, it's actually 7.3 to one, I'm mistaken. And it's just, it's a cannon. It's a real cannon. And we caught a ton of fish on big swim baits here in the Never Stop Tour. So that rod got so much play. So that's about it. That's the boat tour. These are my three favorite rods for the 2019 summer season. Um, if you guys have any questions, anything you are curious about with this boat or boats in general, feel free to drop comments in the comment section below. I'll do my best uh, to respond to you guys because I know it can be very daunting going about buying a boat and looking for a boat. It's just like a big process. It's something that scared me away from getting a boat because I didn't know anything about these. But this is my second like official big boat that I've had now and I feel very comfortable on these things. And um, yeah, just drop me a comment. If you guys are also interested in purchasing a low boat, check the link in the description below. This boat in particular that we reviewed today retails just over $30,000. Um, that price varies depending on what kind of motor and electronics and graphs you're getting, but you can go cheaper, less expensive, and get some of their boats for as low as like, you know, 15 grand, um, a really nice boat too. So they've got a, a myriad of selections, nice like duck boats, they do bass boats, they do pontoons. If you're just like wanting to booze cruise and catching catfish, they got great pontoons too. So maybe that'll be my next boat. A pond, imagine, imagine doing a boat tour of my pontoon boat. Oh my God, someday, 2020, that's the year. But I hope you guys enjoyed this boat tour. Yeah, I'm peacing out, I'm signing on. It's freaking hot in Texas. So I'm gonna get back in the car, cool down, and uh, I'll catch you guys next time, hopefully on the water with this rig. Appreciate the view. As always, folks, keep fishing. Never stop.